Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Stacy with Bluebird Paper and Thread. I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you find what I'm offering um, fun and encouraging. And if you like it, please like and subscribe to the videos. I would really appreciate it. Uh, I did a lot this week. Uh, quite a few whips. I've worked on quite a few whips. I had a couple of new starts, which I'm really excited about. And I have um, a finish, but not a stitchy finish, but something that will work with my stitchy finishes. So I'm excited to show that to you. And I have a little bit of haul. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to start with my whips. Uh, the first one that I'm going to show you is Merry and Bright. I started this with the New Year's Eve 12 by 12 and I didn't get very far. I still didn't get very far. This is in the 2022 Christmas winter issue of Punch, Needle and Primitive Stitches. So if you're looking for that pattern, that's, that's what it is and that's where it's at. I am stitching this on... <clears throat> 32 count even weave in parchment by Fabric Flare. And this is my progress. I finished the candlestick. Well, part of the candlestick. I still have to do the, the cup part of the candlestick. But I worked on that. I can get it a little closer. This was a morning stitch. I had part of it done. I didn't actually get the whole thing done. I had the bottom part of the candlestick almost done. So I had to do the little handle holder and then the starting of the cup right there is what I worked on. But it'll be nice to get this one. Um, out of my <clears throat> my things and uh, my whips and to you know figure out a finish and these I used all of the called for colors DMC this was designed by Misty Purcell of luminous fiber arts she has some really great patterns uh, you should check her out if you haven't already. Um, I really do like her things. So I worked on that. <clears throat> Next, I worked a little bit on Red Bird Sampler um, by Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread. This also was a New Year's Eve 12 by 12 start. I am stitching this on 32 count Belfast Linen by Zweigart. And this is what I got done. I, I just kind of finished working across the bottom with the green. I figured let's fill in the grass, the ground, and then I can go back to having fun with doing the motifs. I'd like to spend a little bit of time on this and actually get it finished in the next few weeks, maybe by mid-March, maybe to the end of March. Um, it's, it's really quite pretty. I'm using all of the called for flosses, I believe. Yes, I'm using all of the called for flosses. I think this is it. I might, I might be missing a couple, but if I'm missing them, they're probably in another project. I just have to pull them out. But very fun. This is showing up on the camera, at least in this light for me when I'm looking at the, you know, at the video. It's showing up more of a light blue, but it really is a very pale aqua teal color. Really, really pretty. A lot of variegation in that one too. So that, that'll be fun to see how that works up when I start stitching it. 
<clears throat> so I worked on that. I think I'm going to put some more time in on that one this week. See if I can't get a little further. And then I pulled out Harrietta and Company by Brenda Gervais. This was also a New Year's Eve 12 by 12 start. She is just so cute. I love her little, her little body and her little dress. And of course the bird and her Easter bat. I just, the whole thing is so cute. And the blues in here are really pretty. I am stitching this one on 32 count winter brew. I really need to cut these fabrics down. And I worked on her feet and her dress. So I'm kind of excited to continue working on her a little bit. It's um it's turning out really nicely. I'm I like it. I am using um I am not using the called for colors um, because the called for colors are a mix of Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts and Classic Color Works. But she did provide, or maybe, um, I think I ordered this from Fat Quarter Shop, and they did provide the floss conversion to DMC. I think this was a kit from them last year. So I, I was able to look at the color on the pattern and then find the color DMC that it, it converts to. And that's what I did. So I'm using all of the called for DMC colors per the conversion. And I don't have these on a ring, so we're going to have to just do our best. Just a lot of fun spring colors, but the blues are a softer blue, more of a country blue, which I really like. I would like to get her done by Easter, so um, if I don't work on her this week, I probably should work on her in the next week or two, because it would be fun to have her out um, amongst all of my little stitchy things. So that would be, that would be good. I put some time in on Strawberry Fair. It's a fun little stitch with a bird and a strawberry, very springy. This is by October House Fiber Arts. When I'm done with this, I think I might put it in a giveaway. I don't need to keep all of my patterns when I'm done. Uh, I am not stitching this on the called for fabric. I am stitching it on a fabric called A Long, Long Time Ago by Fortnite Fabrics. It is a 36 count linen. And I worked on the bird. What kind of matches my sweatshirt. I am really liking this fabric. I I think I mentioned once before that I have a hard time going rogue from what the pattern calls for. And I'm, I'm trying to be better because they can be beautiful even with different colors of fabric and different floss colors. So I am trying to relax a little bit and um, kind of let my creative juices flow. And this one is turning out really super cute. So I got that much of the bird done. I'm on his head and then I'll do his wings, tail, bunny, uh, uh, bunny, belly, and his beak. And then the bird will be done and I can start working on that strawberry. This is one that I would like to have done sometime in the spring. I don't think I need to have it done 
right away by Easter. Um, but by spring, late spring, early summer, I'm using all of the called fours. I am using all of the called for DMCs on this. I stitch um, 36 count. This is two over two. I think a lot of people stitch one over two when you get to a 36 or a 40 count. But this um, like limey green down here and the pink on this color fabric wasn't really showing. So I had made a mistake and I threaded my needle with two threads and started stitching and then I paid, I looked at it and I thought, Ooh, that, why does that look funny? But I realized, uh, that with that mistake, it turned into a happy mistake. So I, I tore it out, which I didn't have much done. So it wasn't a big deal, but I tore it out and I started over again with the two, uh, strands of floss over two. And I'm really much happier with it. I think it's going to pop a lot better off of that fabric because it is such a, it's kind of a dark colored fabric and it's, um, and the color of it's tricky. So I think that that is, um, was a good, a happy mistake that that happened because I think I'm going to be much happier with it than if I had done one strand over two. 40 count, I do stitch one over two most times. Very rarely will I stitch two over two. It gets too um, cramped when you're stitching and you've got four. Basically you would have eight, eight strands going through one space in the fabric. It gets a little crowded. Um, but for 36, I can make it work and it, it doesn't bother me a whole lot. Next, I put in some time on the Valentine tree. This one is also from a punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine. Um, it is from spring of 2022. And that's what that is going to look like. And I'm stitching this one over um, two over two on 32 count pink powder pink splash Lugana. And I got the fabric from the Fat Quarter Shop. And I worked on the tree base. I finished out the base almost. I have um, just a little bit at the top to do. And then I can start working the tree up. But I think this is going to be really, really pretty. I'm not sure how I'm going to finish it. Originally, I thought a pillow, but it might be too big for a pillow. So maybe I'll do some kind of a flat finish, put it on a board of some sort. I don't, we'll see. When it's done, maybe it'll come to me. But this fabric is... So gorgeous. Oh, and I'm using the called for colors and there's only four. Sorry about that. Had a call from work, had a little bit of an emergency I had to take care of. Anyways, uh, I don't remember where I left off. So we're going to just, um, talk about, oh, I think it was the colors called for colors for, um, Valentine tree. This pattern is by, I can't even really see the green, um, pattern is by Livia and Paola Roveris of Roveris. Really cute. Okay. Let's see if I can get back in the zone after that phone call. <clears throat> Okay, I think I think that's it for my whips. Um, yes. Okay, so let's go into new starts. Um, I'm going to start with a new restart. 
I talked a little bit at the beginning, well, sometime in maybe the end of January, early February. I have, um, have subscribed to the Chicken Club through Fat Quarter Shop. It's a monthly pattern and it's a different chicken every every month. Um, and January's was Cornelius. I'm sure you've probably seen it around. It, it's available now, I think, to the public, the pattern. So if you like it and you're not part of the um, club subscription, you can go ahead and pick it up now. But you'll remember I started it too high and I irritated me. So it went to time out for about three weeks. <laughs> I decided that the next one is probably going to be coming soon if it's not already on its way and I probably should start make a decision. So I decided to start this over. I didn't throw this one away because I may decide to pull all of that out um, and I may just chuck it. I I don't know. I always, when I've watched uh, floss tubers and they're like, I threw it away and I'm just, I gasp. <laughs> What are you talking about? You threw it away. Pull that out. Frog it all. Um, it's DMC, so I, I don't think it would stain the fabric. Um, but I am so completely irritated, and it's such a small piece of fabric. I might just go ahead and cut these, you know, cut this out so that I have this and this for a smaller project, and then just chuck the rest. I haven't quite decided. Anyways, <clears throat> this is where I started. I looked at the pattern. The reason I was off is because the pattern includes his name Cornelius at the bottom. And I started in the middle of the fabric so I would have enough room and I wasn't going to stitch Cornelius, which is why this was a problematic. And so I picked the center of the pattern, but the center of the pattern with Cornelius is not the center of the birds. So I restarted it. I think I did an okay job of finding the center. I don't anticipate being too close to a border. And if I am, then I'm going to buy new fabric and I'm just going to start stitching them in one giant piece of fabric and use these smaller pieces for something else because I'll, I just give up. So hopefully this will work out and it'll all be okay. Stay tuned. I will try to work on that a little bit this week too. I am stitching this on a 25 count even weave in barley by Lori Holt. And I'm using the called for flosses, which came in a floss thread pack. I think I've mentioned before, just because it's easy. Um, sometimes I will go ahead and just pick up the, the thread packs rather than try to piece it together and, and run to the store. Because when I run to the store, I wind up picking up double. But um, I've already pulled some of the floss out, but this is what the thread pack will look like. All of the floss that you need to do all 12 of the charts. And then of course they tell you what the colors are and how many skeins of each that you will need. So, um, I saw a sneak peek of the um, February one and it's cute. I can't wait to get it. So I've got to hurry up so I don't fall behind. Now, for a brand new start, I, I saw this chart I think, um, I think it was Elizabeth Ann can stitch had this chart last spring, last summer. I, it's been a while and she was stitching it and I liked it so much that I had to find the chart. It is not an easy chart to find, but I did find it. Um, I don't even want to say where I think I bought it from because I'm not a hundred percent sure. This is from the, by the Scarlet house and it's Anne Topley 1802. And what I liked about it, I liked that it was a dark fabric and I liked that the threads were bright colors. 
and I just fell in love with it. It is a reproduction. The called for fabric is 36 count double dyed black forest linen from Lakeside Linen. And then um, I'm using, I think I'm using all of the called for, yes, I'm using all of the called for flosses. And that's the Gentle Art flosses. I thought if I'm going to do a reproduction, I should probably do the hand dyed flosses because um, I want it to, to kind of resemble the age of the piece. Really pretty, the, the, the reds and the pinks, just really nice. Uh, I could not find the double dyed black forest linen, so I had pulled out a charcoal gray. And I thought this will be perfect, but the gray floss on that linen was too close of a match. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have been able to see it. So when I did my last fabric order, I found a piece and I didn't even buy it for this. I just thought a, a navy blue fabric might be nice to have in my stash. So I wound up buying by fiber from fiber on a whim, 36 count Edinburgh linen in night sky. And it is so beautiful. It is a navy and it has a little bit of a green tint in there. It looks worn. So when I found this fabric, I laid the colors out on it. <clears throat> I may still have to swap out the gray. We'll decide when we get to that color on, this, on the pattern. But it this fabric color gives these threads so much more life than that gray that I had. And the gray, I don't think it was had a modeled, I think it was just a flat, um, a flat color. But this one, I just, I'm, I think I'm going to be really, really happy with it. It is not easy to stitch on. Um, I do most of my stitching um, in the evening because I work. And I think I tore out the border three times. <laughs> Once my eyes got acclimated, it's not that big of a problem. But this is my start. It's a smaller piece on the 36 count. I think it's going to work out to be like 6 by 9 or something like that. But I am loving the way these colors are popping off of that fabric. So I will continue to work on that and see if I can't get a finish. I think it'll look really cute hanging up somewhere here in my craft room. So now that I've got it started, I've had the pattern for a really long time and it's been partially kitted and I finally just decided finish kitting it up. So I ordered the floss a couple months ago and then the fabric came probably, I think it was one of my orders that I made on Christmas day, Christmas night. Um, and it came in and then I thought, Ooh, there it is. So I'm glad I didn't start it on the other. And then the last thing, Thing that I am working on that I started I'm working on a lot but I started was a year of celebrations by hands on design this is the first year I think she has another one a year of celebrations too and um, I'm doing this one and the reason I'm doing this one is um, Artie the vintage st stitcher had this pattern and she said she was going to do it and I thought, oh, it'll be fun to do like a little stitch along a sow with her. So I, I bought the pattern and I didn't have all the floss. It's DMC and I didn't have all the floss uh, or I'm using DMC. So yesterday I, um, I spent some time Friday. Um, I took the day off and I had a little bit of time in between appointments um, on Friday. I went through all of my DMCs and I made a list of what I was missing and I went and I bought it. And some other things but now I could start it so I did I am stitching this I thought it would be fun 
and this is a big enough piece of fabric I may be able to get all of them um, all of them on this piece we'll see um, the call for fabric is 32 count dirty Belfast linen I am stitching this two over two on 32 count desert opalescent uh, Lugana so this is the fabric it's a light tan color and um, you know, if you can kind of see it has a little bit of a of a opalescent greenish uh, shiny thread through it it just sparkles just a little bit and I thought for something like this where there's small little pieces uh, I think it'd be fun so I started this last night I did not get very far because we had um, an issue pop up that we had to deal with but this is my start I started with uh, February and I'm wondering if tomorrow with the Super Bowl if I might be able to get it done or maybe even get it done on Valentine's Day it won't be fully finished but maybe I can get the stitching done they're small patterns but I'm really enjoying this so uh, the goal on this one would be just to I mean it's a really big piece of fabric you can see how big it is I think I'm gonna be able to get all of them on here I don't even know if that's showing up I think I'll be able to get all of them on here and I'll be able to um, have some left over for another project um, but this was a fun fabric and I'm glad that I picked it for this project we shall see how it goes the um, flosses I don't really have a ring I need to buy some more three inch rings but these are the call for flosses for this particular month's design for February's design I'm not sure what this orangey color is for we'll have to wait and see that may get swapped out we'll see that's that <clears throat> so that's it for my new starts and now what I'd like to do is um, talk about my haul I finished the um, the big hearted tiny town it's still not completely finished but I finished this um, a couple week ago maybe actually maybe about two weeks ago and then I fell in love and I thought I need all the tiny towns well I had already purchased the Christmas one and the patriotic one and I knew I wanted the Halloween so I ordered this one from 141 design when I ordered the finishing piece for it it's by heart and hand so I bought this it came I like this um, pattern because they all I don't want to show that they all come with the buttons that go with it this is the back of the blooming I mean it's that's what the blooming they always put a picture of another project on there look how cute that is one of these will probably be finished into a drum they really are a great size for a small little drum it would be good to practice on it so I might do that but I bought um, tiny town and then this is the blooming tiny town came in so I picked that I, I have that one now too and because this one's a spring I will probably stitch this one next although People are talking that she's coming out with another one at the Nashville Needlework Market, which is coming up here in a couple of weeks. So I might have to wait and see what that one is and pre-order pre -order that. Which, let's talk about Nash, the Nashville Needlework Market. All of the designers come out with their, um, with their patterns for the spring and summer. And 
maybe some even early fall, I'm not sure, but they it's a big pattern release. And I guess all of the, the shop owners go to a hotel in Nashville and they shop, the, the designers have suites and they shop and they've got the patterns and their samples shown um, so they can see them live because we all know that when you see a stitch in person, it it does something, it's so much better than seeing it in a picture. And then they can leave, they can purchase what they want and they can leave with stuff for their shop. So a lot of these um, needle workshops, local needle workshops, online needle workshops are um, taking pre-orders so that they can tell the designers, hey, I'm going to need 30 of this pattern. I'm going to need 50 of this pattern. And they don't have to guess and either overbuy for something that isn't going to be, a, a, you know, popular in their, with their people. My apologies again. My 21 year old son is hungry and wanted to go get us lunch. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm not sure where I left off, but, um, I know we were talking about the Nashville needlework network. I mean, not network, the Nashville Needlework um, Market. And um, so I've been seeing, uh, watching different designers videos and there are some really cute things coming out and they are totally going to derail my no spend February because they want you to pre-order by a certain date in February. And I I don't think it's this week coming up. I think it's sometime in the following week before the end of the month that they want the orders um, placed so that they can let the designers know how much to bring for them. Um, and there are so many different charts. Um, Teresa Kogut, she has been doing a couple videos showing her new releases and there are so many patterns that I want that I am, I'm really going to have to limit myself and maybe just pick up one of my favorite. Um, because I have, I have two binders full of patterns that I'm, I am working through them. Um, but I do need to, I do want to stitch all of them. I also have two binders that are completely empty. So there is room for growth with my pattern collection. So we will see. I am going to try to stick to a budget. We will see how that goes. And um, I can always buy later. So there's that. Um, my display piece, oof, my display piece for the... Um, Tiny Town Stitches came in. Uh, it's by Chantel 141 Design Company. But this is the piece right here. It's a shelf sitter. You would do assemble it yourself. Um, so I'll assemble it and then I'll paint it. Um, probably I'm going to I haven't decided if I'm going to stain it with a Tim Holtz, um, either like brush on paint or stain, or if I'm going to spray paint it black, I am leaning towards black, but we'll see. Um, so it came with that. And then this is the board that sits inside of it. And as you can see, it is the perfect size for Tiny Town. I probably could have made this red piece a little bit bigger. And maybe I'll do that for the next one that I finish like this. But imagine that this is black. This is going to have the tiny little um, ball fringe on it. And then um, I, I just think it's going to be so cute. You cannot flip it over and put another one on the back because that's what I was hoping for. But when you flip it over, it doesn't fit in the holder correctly. So you'll have these, you can either have one where they do the magnets on the board and then you do the washers on the finishing piece and you can change it out that way. Or you can buy the extra boards and I bought two extra boards to start. 
So we'll, we'll see how this all <laughs> works out. Um, I am excited to start working on that. Maybe I'll start putting that together and finishing it um, this week. Um, another haul, when I went to Hobby Lobby to pick up my floss, you know, here where I'm at, um, Michael's and Joann's do not always have a good selection. They don't have a full selection of the flosses. All of the flosses are there, but the containers that house them are empty. So when I go to Hobby Lobby, there is always floss. It doesn't matter. I have two that are nearby me and it doesn't matter which Hobby Lobby I go to. They have a full thing of floss. So I went to Hobby Lobby, which is very, very dangerous. I took my mom there after we went to a doctor's appointment yesterday and I told her I'm only buying floss. Lies. I found <laughs> these really cute uh, Buffalo check uh, hearts and they can be used during February, obviously, but I'm thinking they'd be really cute in my craft room um, and as a little extra on a tear tray in the house. So I picked up a package of these and then I picked up a green and beige checked ribbon. I don't know if this one has a wire in it or not. I'm going to say I don't think it does. And it, the color is sage and ivory. Kind of a dark sage. So I picked up that and then they had this really nice natural polka dot. And this one does have wire on the edges. So I picked up a, a spool of this. They actually had a full complement of their ribbons. They were all full. The one that I usually go to, they're always empty, it seems like. So I don't know, it just must be a weird thing. And then I bought the right size glue stick. So I'm <laughs> very excited. I am going to finish some projects hopefully this week. So yay for that. Um, I think that's it for my finishes. I mean, not my finishes, my haul. Um, and now I want to show you, oh no, I have one more finish. 141 Design Company has two different styles of these tier type trays. And so I finished this one. I bought this one. I thought it would be really cute in my craft room and I finished it and I love it. I absolutely love it. This can kind of tuck behind the first one. I mean, it's just so cute. Um, these, I will be honest, this one in particular wobbled a little bit and I was trying to glue and here it just wasn't sticking. So then I, I thought, okay, well, I put glue on the bottom of this, this piece right here, the, the, the base of it and stuck it in and just set it where I wanted it to be and didn't, and then like left the room so it wouldn't fall. And it's, it's in there fairly sturdy now. This one, if this one comes out, I'll do the same thing. The tops fit in very nicely. This came in several pieces. So this little ridge was separate. The, these two ridges were separate from the bases and from this piece. So I put them in a box and I spray paint. It took weeks to spray paint because of our weather, but I'm happy to say it's done. I am so excited. I'm going to put it up when I'm done with this video and put the, um, St. Patty's day stuff on there. So I have something to look at and enjoy, but this was worth it. Um, very reasonable, different. They have another one that is rectangular with one or two rectangle, rectangular, um, tiers as well. Um, I just, I just love it up on this top one. I don't think I'll put anything super heavy. Um, but I think it'll work. I think it'll be okay. I just love it. So that was a, that was a finish. And then last Sunday I spent, I don't know, my husband and I spent like seven hours cleaning out the garage. Um, when my daughter came and moved back in, I had, um, I had taken over her, her room part, half of her room is my craft room. Um, and the reason I had to do that was because my husband bought a classic car and it needed to go in the garage. So my craft room, which was in the garage, um, had to come out. So my, my daughter 
let me have half of her room. She was never home anyway. So I'm like, okay, great. Well, she wound up coming home, um, which meant everything in the craft room had to go in the living room and in the garage. Um, we built a, sh a crafty she shed, so that's done. Um, but I still have a, a lot of things in the garage. So the goal was to go through the garage. So we pulled the car out on Sunday and we started going through everything. We didn't get through the whole garage, but I, it, it took a long time. I purged quite a bit. It feels so good to purge. Um, and I brought a lot of stuff in here. So right now behind you, I have a, a six, no, a two by four. So it's got eight cubbies, um, Calyx unit. So it's, it's like this, but it's, it's just, you know, one of, one of those before four um, cubbies on each side. And I have, um, a shelf divider in there, um, where I have made one cubby, two shelves and I've got bins in there and I've got fabric. So the fabric that I thought I would use for finishing is what is in my craft room. Um, I still have two giant tubs and four smaller tubs full of fabric. Um, I used to make purses. I still guess I make purses. I just haven't in a really long time. Um, purses and makeup bags and things like that. Um, the goal is to eventually work through most of that fabric. We'll see. Um, but when I was going through my things, I found some stitches that I had completely forgotten I had ever done and, um, they're finished. So now they just need to be fully finished. And I thought I would take a moment and I would share them with you. So the first one I'm going to show you, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who the designer is. You guys might know. Um, but anyways, so flowers and it's got a little clay butterfly button. I have no idea what I stitched these on. Pretty sure I used DMC, but I could have used actually, no, I think, I think some of these are actually, um, a hand dyed and then birds, which, you know, me and my birds with a little, um, worm button. Again, I have no idea who the designer is, what the fabric is. It's probably something I got from like Michael's or Joann's. And then this one, Treat Time. And it's got a jack-o'-lantern button at the bottom. I think I'm going to finish that one in a pillow. Um, and I had, I had this fabric in with that one. Is that right? Like this. So I think I was planning on doing something, probably a pillow with it, maybe a bigger pillow. So I don't know what I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to use this fabric. Um, I'm not sure I like it anymore. I think this is a little too yellow for this fab, for this piece here. Um, I got a lot of this. I got like yards and yards. I don't know why. Um, and then this one I really love and I... I'm pretty sure this was in a magazine and I don't have it anymore. I don't know where it went, but I love her. And she's a, a witch flying on her broom with bats. I love the shading. It is not done. Now I'm going to hold it up close and you're not going to judge my stitching, but my stitching is not super great. It's amazing how far my stitching has come when I look at older pieces and that's good, right? You want to see growth. I will probably hang on to her, but I'm half tempted to frame her just like this. I think, I think the shading is amazing. I think even though it's probably half done, you still can tell that it's a witch on a broomstick. Like I think her bottom half, her, bo her bottom is missing and part of her legs are missing, but I think enough of it is here. I might just go ahead and I might just go ahead and, and frame it. I don't know. 
if you have any thoughts, I'd be curious to hear from you. But so that was a fun, a fun surprise that I wasn't expecting when I was cleaning out the garage. Um, we still have a ways to go. I have, you know, another half of the garage to get through. I don't think I have any crafty things on that half. I think it's just stuff for the house that we get into a lot, you know, frequently. But if I find anything else, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Um, I think, I think that's it, uh, for me. Um, yeah, it looks like I hit all of the things I wanted to talk about today. Thank you so much for stopping by. I apologize for all the interruptions. Hopefully when I edit, it won't be um, too terribly choppy. Um, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you stopping by. Please, if you haven't done so already, um, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, hit that notification bell. Um, I'd really... Um, I've got some ideas of what I would like to do stitchy wise, sewing wise, card making wise. Um, and I'd really like to share it. Um, so having those likes really, and the, and the, um, the subscribers really is kind of encouraging me to kind of move forward in, in my little crafty endeavors. So, um, I would appreciate it if you would do that. Anyways, thanks so much. Have a great weekend and I will see you next time. Happy stitching.